Hi everyone, this is Mohit and welcome to another lecture video on the dynamics of machinery. In this video, we will be solving a numerical problem from the static force analysis of slider crank mechanism. So in last video, we have solved a problem on the static force analysis of power bar mechanism. So here we will be solving on the slider crank. So let's get into the problem. So here we have a slider crank mechanism with the following dimensions, which is acted upon by an external force F, which whose magnitude is two kilonewton at point B as shown in figure, the figure will be coming here. Crank OA is given as 100 mm. The connecting rod AB is 450 mm and the angle at the configuration of AOB is equal to 120 degree. So uh, based on this, we will be drawing the configuration diagram. Actually, the configuration diagram was uh, given. So this is the configuration that was given in the question. So and this configuration diagram is drawn up to a scale of uh, one centimeter is equivalent to 100 mm. So this is the crank OA, which is drawn at a length of 100 mm or one centimeter and the this is an inline slide crank mechanism you so you can draw this axis and on this point b can be found by using uh, by taking a length of this 450 mm and you can draw an arc so you'll be getting that point and your slider can be constructed here and this will be the fixed link along which the slider is reciprocating so this is the entire configuration diagram of this slider crank mechanism and it is acted upon by an external force of 2 kilonewton magnitude so as a result of this 2 kilonewton magnitude force acting on the slider the slider will be moving towards left and this force will be transmitted through the connecting rod and finally this will be distorting the entire mechanism from the static equilibrium condition. That means this will be trying to move the crank in the anti-clockwise direction. So to restore it back to the equilibrium position or equilibrium condition, you will have to apply some torque so that it is going back or it is maintaining, in, maintaining its static equilibrium condition. So in this question, you have to determine the input torque T on the link OA, which is required for maintaining the static equilibrium of the mechanism. So uh, the next step will be to conduct the static force analysis for that we'll have to identify the type of members or we have to classify the members as two force, three force and two force and one torque member. So we'll be seeing that now. So here if you're observing this is link number four. I, I am numbering this as fixed link is link number one. Here also fixed link one is coming. Two is the input crank. Three is the connecting rod and four is the slider which is coming over here. So if you're uh, looking the slider four is making in contact with the ground one and also with the connecting rod which is numbered three. The four so you can uh, list out the forces which are acting on this uh, link or the uh, slider as force exerted by ground on this slider is f14 force exerted by the connecting rod 3 on 4 is f34 and also along with that the external force f that means this 2 kilonewton magnitude force is also acting so this makes the slider a three force member since three number of forces are acting on this uh, member so this is a three force member so this is actually a three force member and now if you are looking on to this link number three this three on three no external force is acting but this three is making contact with link number two and this slider four so these two links two and four will be applying force on three and you can name those forces as force exerted by link 2 on 3 can be named as f23 and similarly this force exerted by 4 on 3 can be named as f43 this f43 which is force exerted by 4 on 3 and f3 force force exerted by 3 on 4 are like action and reaction and they are equal in magnitude opposite in direction and having the same line of action that we will be using while constructing the free body and so since only these two forces are acting on this link number three or the connecting rod this link three or the connecting rod is a two force member so this is a two force member and if you are observing or if you are moving on to the second link which is the crank oa here you have to apply the torque to maintain this uh, back to equilibrium so there one torque will be coming and that torque i am naming in as two so along with that torque, it is acted upon by forces from links 1 and 3 since the link 2 is making contact with this these two links. So force exerted by 1 on 2 can be named as F12 
and force exerted by 3 on 2 can be named as F32 along with this one torque is coming. So this makes the link number 2 or this connecting or this crank it as a 2 force and 1 torque member. So we have classified or we have identified the type of members as 2 force, 3 force and 2 force and 1 torque here. Crank is a 2 force and 1 torque member, connecting rod is a 2 force member and the slider is a 3 force member upon which the external force of 2 kN is acting in the horizontal direction. So based on this one, we will be constructing the free body diagram next. So while constructing the free body diagram, we will be considering the link which is the simplest one or which is involving the least number of unknowns and the simplest link is a 2 force member. So if you are observing this connecting rod is the simplest member where two forces are only acting and those two forces i have already named which are f force exerted by 2 on 3 f 2 3 and f 4 3 so you are knowing the equilibrium conditions for a two force member the force magnitude should be same that means this f 2 3 magnitude should be same as f 4 3 their direction should be opposite and line of action should be same so for a two force member we are taking the line of action which is same as the link itself so link a b is lying in this direction so link this is the link a b so line of action of f 2 3 and f 4 3 will be taken along the same direction so you can consider the line of action of f 4 3 as this one and line of action of f 2 3 as this one so i will be naming this as the line of action of f 2 3 and this is the line of action of f 4 3 but here you are not knowing the direction that means you are not knowing whether f 2 3 is acting in this direction or in this direction if f 2 3 is acting in this direction then f 4 3 will be acting in this direction according to the equilibrium conditions of a two force member so now you are up you have obtained the line of actions of this two uh, forces so now we will be using uh, this line of actions to the next link so next link will be that we will be taking is link number four that is the slider so slider is a three force member and you have listed the three forces which are acting on the slider these are force exerted by link three on four f three four force exerted by ground 1 on 4 f14 and this external force of 2 kN magnitude and out of these three forces this external force f is known completely by its magnitude and direction 2 kN acting in the horizontal direction towards left so its magnitude and direction is completely known and the line of action of f43 is known so if you are considering this f43 is the force exerted by 4 on 3 and f34 is the force exerted by 3 on 4 these are like action and reaction their magnitudes are same and direction is opposite but they are acting along the same line of action or they are having the same line of action so you can transfer this same line of action of f43 to this link 4 uh, and you can name it as the line of action of f34 so you can construct the line of action which is parallel to this f43 that is passing through this point and this will be giving the line of action of f34 so now you are having this three force member which is uh, link number four and for the equilibrium static equilibrium conditions of a three force member the you already studied that the uh, force vector polygon should be a close to one and there should be a concurrent point then only you can find the line of action of the third force that is f14 force that is coming from the ground one to the link number four so concurrent point now you can obtain by the intersection of this line of action of f34 and the external force f so line of action of f34 is coming in this direction and this external force is coming in this direction so at this point these two forces will be meeting and along this point the force that will be coming from ground will be acting that means this will be the line of action of f14 so you can draw the line of action of f14 in this direction so this will be the line of action of f14 so now you are having the directions or line of actions of three forces out of which one force external force is completely not so with the with the use of this one you will be constructing the force polygon so you will be constructing the force polygon and for that you require a scale and you can take the scale as one centimeter is representing one kilonewton so here the external forces of magnitude 2 kN which is acting horizontally towards left so you can 
கன்சிடர் இட் அஸ் ஏ ஸோ யூ கேன் ட்ரா இட் அஸ் ஏ டூ சென்டிமீட்டர் லைன் ஸோ யூ கேன் ட்ரா தி ஃபஸ்ட் வெக்டர் விச் இஸ் ரெப்ரஸண்டிங் தி எக்ஸ்டர்னல் ஃபோர்ஸ் விச் இஸ் ஆஃப் டூ கிலோ நோட்டன் மேக்னிடியூட் ஸோ திஸ் வில் பி ரெப்ரஸண்டிங் திஸ் ஃபோர்ஸ் எஃப் நவ் யூ ஆர் ஹேவிங் திஸ் லைன் ஆஃப் ஆக்ஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் அண்ட் எஃப் ஒன் ஃபோர் அண்ட் யூ கேன் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் டூ எதர் ஹெட் ஆர் டெயில் இஃப் யூ ஆர் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபரிங் திஸ் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் டூ இட்ஸ் ஹெட் தென் யூ வில் ஹவ் டு ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர் திஸ் லைன் ஆஃப் ஆக்ஷன் ஆஃப் எஃப் ஒன் ஃபோர் டூ இட்ஸ் டெயில் ஸோ ஹியர் ஐ எம் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபரிங் தி ஃபோர்ஸ் லைன் ஆஃப் ஆக்ஷன் ஆஃப் திஸ் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் டூ தி ஹெட் ஆஃப் திஸ் வெக்டர் எஃப் தென் திஸ் வில் பி கமிங் லைக் திஸ் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் தி லைன் ஆஃப் ஆக்ஷன் ஆஃப் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் அண்ட் நெக்ஸ்ட் ஐ வில் பி ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபரிங் தி லைன் ஆஃப் ஆக்ஷன் ஆஃப் எஃப் ஒன் ஃபோர் டூ தி ஹெட் டெயில் ஆஃப் திஸ் வெக்டர் எஃப் தென் தட் வில் பி கமிங் லைக் திஸ் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் தி லைன் ஆஃப் ஆக்ஷன் ஆஃப் எஃப் ஒன் ஃபோர் நவ் யூ கேன் கம்ப்ளீட் தி ட்ரையாங்கிள் பை ட்ராயிங் திஸ் சைட்ஸ் ஒன் வெக்டர் ஒன் எல்லா வெக்டர் வில் பி கமிங் ஹியர் அண்ட் அனதர் வெக்டர் வில் பி கமிங் ஹியர் ஸோ நவ் யூ ஆப்டைன் தி ட்ரையாங்கிள் அண்ட் டைரக்ஷன்ஸ் கேன் பி ஆப்டைன் சென்ஸ் தி ரிசல்ட் அண்ட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஃபோர்ஸ் இஸ் ஜீரோ திஸ் ஷுட் பி எ சைக்ளிக் ஒன் தட் மீன்ஸ் ஆரோ ஹெட் ஆஃப் திஸ் வெக்டர் ஷுட் கம் ஹியர் அண்ட் தி ஆரோ ஹெட் ஆஃப் திஸ் வெக்டர் ஷுட் கம் ஹியர் அண்ட் திஸ் ஃபோர்ஸ் யூ கேன் நேம் இட் ரைட் நவ் ஆஸ் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் அண்ட் திஸ் வெக்டர் கேன் பி நேம்ட் அஸ் எஃப் ஒன் ஃபோர் ஸோ ஃப்ரம் திஸ் வெக்டர் பாலிகன் யூ ஹவ் யூஸ்ட் எ ஸ்கெயில் ஆஃப் ஒன் சென்டிமீட்டர் ஈக்குவல் அண்ட் டூ டூ ஒன் கிலோ நோட்டன் ஸோ யூ கேன் மெஷர் தி வேல்யூ ஆஃப் திஸ் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் அண்ட் யூஸ் தி ஸ்கெயில் அண்ட் கன்வெர்ட் இன் டூ வேல்யூஸ் ஆஃப் கிலோ நோட்டன் ஹியர் இஃப் யூர் யூ ஃபைண்டிங் திஸ் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் வில் பி ஈக்குவல் டு தி வேல்யூ ஆஃப் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் வில் பி ஈக்குவல் டு 2.04 பாயிண்ட் ஜீரோ ஃபோர் கிலோ நோட்டன் யூ வில் பி கெட்டிங் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் தி வேல்யூ தட் யூ ஆர் கெட்டிங் ஃப்ரம் திஸ் ஃபோர்ஸ் பாலிக் ஸோ எஃப் இஃப் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் சிமிலர்லி யூ கேன் ஃபைன் தி வேல்யூ எஃப் எஃப் ஒன் ஃபோர் ஆல்சோ ஸோ எனிவே ஹியர் வி நீட் டு கெட் தி வேல்யூ எஃப் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் ஸோ யூ கேன் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர் அப் டு தி இன்புட் லிங்க் டு ஃபைன் தி ரிக்வெட் ஒர்க் ஸோ ஹியர் எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் ஈக்குவல் டு டூ பாயிண்ட் ஜீரோ ஃபோர் கிலோ நோட்டன் அண்ட் இட்ஸ் டைரக்ஷன் நவ் யூஆர் ஹேவிங் ஸோ எஃப் த்ரீ ஃபோர் ஆக்ஸ் ஆக்டிங் in this direction so f34 is acting in this direction and f14 is acting towards up that is the force which is coming from the ground is acting in this direction so if f34 is acting in this direction then f43 which is opposite to this one will be coming in this direction on the linked 3 or the connecting so you can now you can obtain the line of action of f43 so this will be the f43 and for the two force member you can obtain the line of or the direction of this f23 as this one and its magnitude will also be same as this f23 will be same as f43 and that is same as f34 and the value of f34 now we have obtained which is equal to 2.04 kilo newton so now you have obtain or you have sold up to the free body diagram of the crank now you can use the same concept for the uh, drawing the free body diagram of link number 2 or the crank that is coming here so link number 2 is a two force and a one torque member and those two forces are i already named it the force exerted by ground on crank which is f12 and force exerted by the connecting rod on this crank which is f32 and the torque that is coming so now you obtain this f23 and this f23 and f32 are like action reaction so their line of action should be same direction should be opposite and magnitude should be same so now you are having the uh, line of action of f23 or direction of f23 here so same line of action can be this is passing through the point a which is at the end of this connecting rod as well as at the end of the crank so this line of action can be transferred to this point also so this line of action will be same and direction will be opposite since f23 and f32 are like action and reaction so now you can consider the line of action of f32 which is passing through this one and since f23 is acting towards right this f32 will be acting in this direction so this will be the f 3 2 and the another force which is coming is f12 and that force is coming from the ground and this uh, crank and ground is making contact at this point o so this point force should pass through the point o and it should be parallel to this force that is the equilibrium condition for a two force and one torque member so now you can construct the uh, direction as well as the line of action of force f12 which is passing through this point and this direction will be 
the same as this one so this force can be named as f12 and since f23 value is 2.04 kilonewton and this should be same as f32 so this value of f32 is also 2.04 kilonewton and this f12 is also 2.04 kilonewton so if you are observing this two pair of forces f32 acting in this direction and f12 acting in this direction will be creating a couple in the anti clockwise direction and to bring it back to equilibrium condition or if you are considering the equilibrium condition for a two force and one torque member the torque which is to be applied on this link should be coming in an opposite direction to the torque created by this pair of forces so you will have to apply a torque in the or couple in the clockwise direction and that couple i am naming it as t and this will be acting in the or to be applied in the clockwise direction and its value can be obtained by knowing the perpendicular distance from this one so you will have to measure the perpendicular distance from this configuration diagram from the free body diagram of link number two and you have to use the scale which you have used for drawing the configuration diagram and then you can find the uh, torque to be applied on this crank to maintain it in static equilibrium so here we in this last step we will be evaluating this torque and for that you have to measure this uh, distance perpendicular distance h as i mentioned so if you are measuring and converting it into a scale then this h value will be becoming 75 mm so this will be becoming 75 mm so now we are having this value so you can evaluate the torque which is equal to 2.04 kilonewton into 75 mm then you will be getting in units of kilonewton millimeter and that value will be equal to 153 kilonewton mm you will be getting and that is to be applied in the clockwise direction that means that means if this external force is acting on this slider this will be trying to rotate the uh, crank in the anti-clockwise direction and to bring it back the entire mechanism to equilibrium you should apply a torque of this magnitude 153 kilonewton mm in the clockwise direction and that we have evaluated this so this is the complete solution for this problem hope you understood and thanks for watching